Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install dev mode on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention for this video, I'm just going to be showing you the setup process of how to install dev mode. I'll then give an example of how to change some settings and possible issues you will have with your wireless network. And I will then be showing you how to install a game directly from dev mode on your PC. In today's video, I'm going to be using RetroArch as an example, just to show you how to set up and access everything remotely to transfer files and applications to your PC. If you have very specific needs or you want to do something specific, leave comments down below. I'll try to get back to them specifically later in a follow up video or just help you out in the comments as much as I can. So the first thing you need to do for today's video is of course have your Xbox turned on. Right now we're going to be starting from our dashboard and what we're going to be doing is clicking Y or search on our controller in this keyboard pop-up that pops up. We're going to be typing in dev kits and we're going to be scrolling up here and I'm going to be clicking on the green one right here that has the two pictures of the Xboxes on top of it. I'm going to be clicking get simply clicking A on our controller. It's then going to say congratulations we got it and then this is going to start installing right away. From this point I'm going to be clicking A to view the progress and we can see it's starting to download. It's around 100 megabytes in size so it should only take a couple seconds to download. Once it's downloaded what I'm going to be doing is coming back to my dashboard. I'm going to be coming down to my apps and games. I'm going to be coming down the left. I'm going to be coming to the app section and I'm going to be selecting the dev mode app that we just downloaded. I'm going to be opening this up and here we're going to go down a process of actually creating a dev mode inside our console. At this point, I will also mention that when we actually put our Xbox in dev mode, it will not overwrite or delete anything from our system. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. However, you are going to need to have at least five gigabytes in the storage space. What we're going to have to do is once we get to this screen, we're going to have to click next twice until we get to the activate console section where we will then get a code and a link on screen. So what we're going to have to do from this point is come over to any desktop PC and what we're going to be doing is entering in this URL that we see right here on screen and most likely when you first come in here you will be asked to log into your Microsoft or Outlook account. In this case I've already logged in here. What we're going to be doing is scrolling down here until we see the developer programs right here and we're going to be clicking on Windows and Xbox and we're going to be clicking the get started button right here. Once this opens up we'll be brought to the sign up page for this and what we're going to have to do is come here to this page, come over over to the right and we're going to be clicking on the sign up link right here. Once this opens up, you are going to have to set up all your account information. Now they do ask for a couple different things here. First is your location. Then you have to choose an account type, either an individual or a company. In this case, I am an individual, so it's going to cost me around 14 euro. Or if you're a company, it's going to cost around 75 euro. This will vary depending on your location and your currency. However, it is really easy to set up here. And then all you need to do is enter all of your contact and information below. I'm not going to be putting this on screen. I'm actually going to be skipping to when my account is created, but it shouldn't take too long. It's really easy easy to set up all this. Once all your information is entered, we're going to have to accept the terms and conditions, and then we're going to be able to click finish. And then we're going to be redirected to the registration confirmation page. From here, we can go back to our dashboard. We can get some more information about our account. But from this point, we're actually not going to be staying here. And we're going to be going back to the link that is found on our Xbox. Again, I'll be leaving this link in the description down below. Now, from this point here, we'll be brought to the manage Xbox one console screen. And here below this, we should see a list of all currently added Xbox consoles. So once we get to this screen, what we're going to be doing is clicking on the plus button on the right. We're going to be clicking the enter activation code button and then this pop-up will appear. Now what we're going to need to do from this point is come back to our Xbox and we're going to be grabbing the activation code that showed up here before. Now if you've left your Xbox idle for a while you might get this button to get a new code. All we need to do is connect up our controller again, click A to get a new code and we're going to be taking this code and we're going to be entering it into our web browser so that it matches up correctly. Once your code is entered we're going to click submit and then our code and information will be entered into the web browser. Now if we come back to look at our Xbox we can also see now instantly it's going to start activating and we're going to start activating this Xbox as a developer account Xbox. Now from this point if we come back to our Xbox we'll see this screen right now to switch to developer mode. What we'll have is two options switch and restart which is going to automatically restart it as a developer account. We're going to be simply clicking switch and restart and then this can take a bit of time while our Xbox switches and restarts into developer mode. So once your console has fully reset you'll be brought to the dev mode UI like you see I have on screen right now. The next issue I had was for some reason I couldn't connect to Xbox Live. I think that's because I'm using a wireless connection. If you're having a wired connection I don't think this will be an issue so to fix this what we need to do is come to our settings here on the left come down here to launch settings we're going to be coming to network settings and then we're going to be setting up a wireless network so basically the dev mode version of the Xbox account is going to act like a brand new Xbox so we basically need to set up our wireless connection again once your wireless network is back up if we come to our home page we should see the Xbox live is now up and running and that is an important step we're going to need to have that up and running before we do anything else so now that our dev mode is fully up and running the next thing we're going to be doing is remotely accessing this from our computer and we're going to be transferring the necessary files to install RetroArch on our 
Xbox. So this is going to require us to change a couple more settings here on our Xbox. So what we're going to be doing is coming to our homepage. We're going to be clicking right twice and we're going to be coming down here to the remote access option and we're going to be clicking on the remote access settings. Once this opens up, the first thing you need to do is make sure enable Xbox device portal is enabled. And just under here, you will see two URLs. Either one of these you should be able to browse to in your browser. And we're going to be using those a little bit later on. What we're going to be doing is coming down here a little bit further to authentication and we're going to be setting up a username and password. Now, this is something I would recommend doing just to make sure Xbox is fully secure. So no random people can come into your URLs and just randomly drop files in your Xbox, making sure the Xbox device portal is enabled and then setting up a username and password underneath the authentication section. Now, once this is done and you try to come to this web page, it might mention to you that this web page is not secure. In this case, we don't have to worry about this. We're going to be clicking on the advanced settings and we're going to be continuing anyway so we can actually access this web page. If you've set a password on the previous step, you may be asked for the password in this small pop-up. Simply enter the username and password and then you'll be brought to this dashboard screen where we're going to be able to transfer files and different information from our PC to our Xbox. Now, as mentioned, I'm going to be installing RetroArch from this point. So I already have the necessary files and assets downloaded for me. So what you're going to need to do for any applications you want to install is to download any of the application files and any dependencies they need. As mentioned, I'll be showing that in a second with RetroArch, but you'll need to download whatever files and assets you need for your specific application or the game you're trying to install on your dev mode Xbox. So once all your RetroArch files are downloaded, we're going to be coming back to the Xbox portal that we came to before. We're going to be coming to the My Games and Apps on the home section right here, and we're going to be clicking on an add button to add the new files. Once this opens up, we should see deployer install application. What we're going to be doing is clicking add files. We're going to be locating to where we downloaded our RetroArch files. And for the first file to be selected, we're going to be selecting the RetroArch app itself. So this is going to be the big file. We're going to be clicking OK. Then in this pop up, we're going to be clicking next. And then we're going to have to select any necessary dependency files. Again, we're going to be browsing. And this time we're going to be selecting the C++ file, the other application file that we downloaded to. And this is going to be all the necessary dependencies for RetroArch. Once you have both of these files selected, we're simply going to be clicking start in this little pop-up and then our files are going to start to be sent from our PC to our Xbox and you will not see any information or upload or any progress like that on your Xbox screen so you just need to be patient here while this transfers across and again this can take a couple of minutes. So once this transfer and install process is fully done if we come back to the home page of our Xbox we should see under games and apps RetroArch will actually show up here automatically. Now one extra thing you might have to do with your game depending on if it's a game or application is change the settings inside so Xbox knows if it's a game or application. So since I'm going to be using RetroArch, I actually want to set it up as a game so I can utilize and use the full graphics horsepower of the Xbox. I'm going to be showing you how to do that next. We need to select it using the select button or the two box button on our Xbox controller. We're going to be coming to properties and we're going to be changing the application type from application to game. So this is an important step to make sure we can fully utilize this app with all of the graphics horsepower inside the Xbox. From this point, we're going to be coming back to the home screen right now to restart our Xbox to make sure everything is saved and all of our settings are correctly implemented. After some time, the Xbox should reboot and you should be brought back to the dev mode screen. What we're going to be doing is coming to the home page right here. We're going to be coming under quick actions and we're going to be launching the home, which is going to bring us to the Xbox One UI. It's a little bit nicer to look at than the dev mode right here and it'll be more familiar than what we're used to. From this point, we're going to be coming down here to the my apps and game section. And don't be concerned if none of your normal games show up here. As mentioned, they won't show up in the dev mode. I'll be showing you how to change that later, but you will notice RetroArch comes up here under the game section. And just like that, you've set up dev mode, installed a brand new application and fully customized and set up everything as you need. The next and last thing I'm going to be showing you is how to leave dev mode without actually losing any of your applications or files. By default, when you exit dev mode, you will lose everything. So I'm going to be showing you how to avoid that. And that's going to be the end of the video. So once you're in your dev mode, what we're going to be doing is coming to the home page right here. Underneath quick actions, you will have leave dev mode option. And if you select this open, you'll get this pop up to confirm if you want to leave dev mode. What you need to do is come up here and de check delete side loaded apps and games. It's really important. If you accidentally leave this check, you'll have to do the retro arch step and install everything everything manually again. So every time you leave dev mode, be sure to uncheck this option. So when you leave dev mode, everything will still be installed. And later, if you want to enter back into dev mode, all you need to do is open up the dev mode app that we installed at the start of the video, restart and launch back into dev mode. And all of your apps will still be there a little bit later on. And it's just to double check and make sure that you can jump back and forth so you can play your normal games. And then you can play your games on RetroArch without any worries of losing any content or any data. And that's the best way to do it. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to install dev mode on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox series x if you guys enjoyed this tutorial be sure to drop a like subscribe if you're new check out the other videos on the channel until next time guys as always keep it saucy peace